there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing some challenging DIYs with me today? Yeah, challenging. Come on in. Let's get started. Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit and I gotta tell ya I always get a little bit nervous when I get Whitney because I really never know how nice she's gonna be to me in these challenges but it always makes for a really great time so I'm excited to see what she sent to me. I sent a box over to Courtney at Creative on the Cheap. She is the creator who puts this challenge on and has been putting it on for a while and this is always a challenge that I am super excited to take part in because I feel like it's just some fun content to bring to all of our viewers and subscribers. And so, yeah, I look forward to these boxes every couple of months when they come. But for now, I am going to open up this box and let's see what Whitney has in store for me this April. Drum roll, please. Okay, first up, we have got a card and it says simple ways to practice self-love. Such a cute card. She says, Dear Kelly, hey girl, it's that time again. I had a blast picking out these items for you and I don't think the challenge items this time are as bad as the Jingle Bells. Yeah, she gave me a run for my money on that one. I think that one was one of my epic fails that I kind of cheated on. I'm so excited to see what you create. You always work your magic. Happy Easter, spring, and happy crafting. Love, Whitney. Okay, first up, we have got this canvas. This is a wall art canvas with, it's one of those DIY ones that you can paint. So, okay, that's doable. Uh, we've got this adorable garden plaque, this spring garden plaque. Oh my word, seriously? <gasps> These are so cute. It's a mini mason jar set by Crafter Square. You're getting two in a pack. Would you look at how cute those are? I have not seen these yet. Oh, I love the size of those. How cute are those? Oh, fun, fun, fun. She has given me some spring napkins, some paper straws. We've got some spring stickers. Okay, I am seeing a theme here. Okay, I'm really gonna have to step out of my comfort zone on this one, Whitney, because there is nothing farmhouse about this, but I think this is gonna be fun. Okay, oh good golly. She has given me some bright beads with a tassel and a rainbow. This is a nice size. Okay, um, we've got challenge item two here. We'll set that aside. And we have got, oh, I know what this is. Challenge item one. I already know what that is just by the feel of it. It is one of those garden knee pads. I'm calling it now before I even open it. We've got one of these fun uh, signs by Crafter Square that I guess a stick sign that are in the garden section at Dollar Tree now and this beautiful pot. Okay, okay, this is totally, totally doable. Oh, I'm excited already. I've already got a couple good ideas. Now let's open up the challenge item. So we've got challenge item one here, and it is. It is the foam knee pad from Dollar Tree for the garden. Okay. Oh my word. Ooh, I am drawing a blank on this. Okay, and challenge item two, read the back. Oh my God. Oh, read the back, read the back, read the back, read. Oh, read the back, duh, Kelly. This may or may not be a rebuttal to the shower curtain. Oh my word. Okay, so in December, I sent Whitney her box and I gave 
keep her for her challenge items shower curtain rings and a shower curtain and so she has given me a tablecloth okay okay my word okay so i am definitely it, it, she said these aren't that bad, but I am drawing a blank. Typically, something comes to me pretty quickly, but it is not right now. Oh, Whitney, you got me the last time with the bells. So she is gonna be the one who gets me again, I'm thinking, but we'll see. I am up for the challenge. Along with the two challenge items here that Whitney sent me that need to be incorporated into a DIY somehow, Courtney likes to put a twist into the challenge as well. And so the twist for this box is one of the DIYs has to be done using no adhesive or glue. You cannot use any tape, you cannot use adhesive dots, you cannot use hot glue or a tacky glue. There is no glue or adhesive allowed in one of the DIYs. And so, you know what, now that I'm saying that, I already think I have an idea um, for the tablecloth. So with that being said, I'm gonna put all this stuff out on my craft table. I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna stare at it for a few days, kind of touch it, move it around. I'm gonna sleep on it and I will meet you back here in a flash to create with these amazing items that Whitney sent me. This canvas seems like a good place to start. I'm gonna start off by removing it. The canvas itself is just held together with some staples and I am seeing that the wood underneath that's actually holding the canvas is still a raw wood. And so I think I have an idea of how I wanna utilize this. I won't be needing the printed canvas, just the wood frame itself. I'm gonna give this frame a good coating with some matte black paint. I'm using Apple Barrel today. Because Mother's Day is right around the corner, I figured, you know what, self, this is a good excuse to do some Mother's Day themed DIYs using this mystery box. So that's what all of these DIYs are going to be geared towards. I'm also gonna take one of Crafter Square's square canvases. Now, I don't know what size this is, but Dollar Tree has them and I am going to give it a good coating with some of Waverly's white chalk paint. The canvas itself is kind of an off-white and I needed it to be a bold, bright white, so that is why I am giving it a coating. White on white, why not? Then I'm gonna take and place some hot glue on the back side of my wood canvas frame and I'm gonna place it right on top of the canvas itself. How lucky was that? Kind of a win-win that it was the exact size. Yep, there we go, just like that. I am utilizing my Cricut. I didn't have any chipboard on hand, so a great alternative is a cereal box. Why not? It does the same thing. It's a bit thicker than paper. And so I cut out several puzzle pieces and the word mom. Recycle some of those boxes that you have in your cabinet, a pasta box, any box, an oatmeal box, a cracker box and use your Cricut to cut out words, letters, pieces, because when you do that and you add it to a DIY, it elevates it up off the project versus just cutting out vinyl, and you can see that you can easily paint it. And so again, going with some black paint, I'm gonna go ahead and paint six of those puzzle pieces and the word mom, then using some hot glue, you can use a tacky glue if you want, I'm just kind of in a hurry. I'm gonna hot glue the mom onto the top there of my canvas piece. I'm gonna add these puzzle pieces here at the bottom. And you can see just by elevating it here, you know, as I'm doing it, it really makes all the difference versus just having kind of a flat mom put onto the canvas or a stencil. If you have stencils and no Cricut, I say do it or maybe use some stickers. Uh, you can find budget-friendly stickers at Hobby Lobby and Michaels all the time on sale. Now, the number of puzzle pieces you're gonna use is gonna be dependent on how many people are in your family. 
since there are six of us, Ray, Kayla, Allie, Winnie, Biza, myself, that's why I'm using six puzzle pieces. Then going in with some vinyl, I did cut out the saying, you are the piece that holds us together. What a fun DIY, right? Now, if you wanna add names to the puzzle pieces, you can. I thought about doing it using a gel pen. Now I gotta utilize these beads and I figured that these beads would be a good finishing touch to add to the top of this piece as a hanger. And so an easy way to paint your beads is to put them in a Ziploc baggie, put some paint in there, just kind of mush that bag around easy, right? Other than going in and painting each individual piece. Once they dried, I saw that there were some spots that uh, needed some touching up. So I did go in and touch them up with a paintbrush. I added the beads to some pipe cleaner just to give it some, I guess, sturdiness and to the back side of my frame. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it on there. And I feel like this is going to give this piece the finishing touch that it needed. And it was a good excuse to use those colored beads. And again, if you wanna add names uh, to the puzzle pieces, you can. I want to take a second and welcome you if you are new to my channel and you are visiting for the first time from one of the other creators channels thank you so much for stopping by I look forward to seeing you in the comment section so don't be shy and leave me a comment and introduce yourself what do I have in mind for this tablecloth this is challenge item number one from Whitney thank you I decided to cut it into strips. This tablecloth is pretty long. It's one of the rectangle ones. I wanna say it's 102 inches long, which is going to be perfect for this DIY. And so I am using one of Dollar Tree's rotary cutters just to make it a bit even. And I'm gonna cut this entire tablecloth into two inch strips. Then I'm gonna fold it in half so it's double sided and we're not seeing the back side, which is the white side. Then I'm gonna cut it cut it no then I'm gonna tie it into knots just like this and I'm gonna do this with all of the pieces then I'm gonna take one of Dollar Tree's floral wreath boards this is the smaller one I'm gonna use some zip ties because I am implementing the twist into this DIY Courtney's twist this twist again was using no adhesive glue or tape and so using zip ties I'm gonna take three of the strips that I tied into knots and I am going to use the zip tie to attach it to the wreath board. Look at how cute that green gingham is, right? I'm gonna do this around the whole outside ring there using the green and you can see just how cute it is. Each zip tie has three pieces of tablecloth. Then in the next row, I'm gonna utilize the white pieces of the tablecloth and I'm gonna fill it in just like that. Then I'm gonna go in with that center ring and I'm gonna add the last of the gingham making a wreath. Now for the center of this, since there are some holes left, I dug into my floral stash, poke those floral stems, the wire stems right through the board itself. In the center there, it took three of these. These flowers are flowers that you can find at Walmart. They are 97 cents a pick, which you can't beat. And so I figured I'd use some fuller, thicker ones. And three, like I said, did the trick. And because again, this is a no glue DIY, on the back side of it to ensure that these flowers stay in, I just kind of bent the wire stems and kind of placed them right under the zip ties there to hold them into place. I am winging it with this one, but it is working, so I am happy. On the front, I felt like it was missing something, so I figured I'd take one of those galvanized words from Dollar Tree, welcome. It's held on by a wire, and so I just wired it onto the flowers, and just like that, we've got a nice spring floral wreath using no glue. Now let's address the foam knee board. Oh, Whitney, you almost got me on this one again. You really did. And truth be told, today is Friday, the day that this mystery box is being uploaded. And I finally got an idea of what to do with this foam knee board yesterday, Thursday. And I DIY'd it last minute. I really was about to throw the towel in 
when it came to me that I could make a letter out of the foam. Now, if you wanna do this DIY, you can very easily do it the way I'm doing it, or you can go to Michael's, Joann's, Walmart and get a wood or a chipboard letter and do this DIY, but because I needed to use this foam, this is what I'm utilizing it for. Since my initial is K, I'm cutting out a K and it's a pretty easy letter to cut out. Now when you cut this foam, it is really easy to cut through, but the trick to it is really having a very sharp tool to cut it through. You don't want to use something that isn't uh, super sharp because you will get those jagged edges. And so because I had this really sharp utility knife, that's what I used. I got my letter good and cut out and decided because it was a bit too purple, I'd go in with some of, uh, I think this is Hello Hobby's Swan. I didn't want it to be too stark of a white and I'm gonna give it a good coat or two of this just to cover up the purple. And although this letter is textured, I wanted it to look a bit better than just some foam that was painted and so I am going to go in with some Mod Podge and give it a good coat on the top of some Mod Podge because I'm going to cover it with burlap. Now some may say Kelly the foam was already textured I know but just by adding the burlap it's going to make this I guess DIY look a bit more high-end instead of like I said a foam knee board that I painted. Once I've got that burlap on, I'm gonna go in with a second coat of Mod Podge just to really adhere it on and stiffen up that burlap. Once I cut off the excess burlap, I decided that this letter needed a bit of age, some distressing, so I decided to do that using some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. And it is really easy to apply when you use a stiffened paintbrush. Just cut down those bristles real short on that paintbrush that you're not too fond of and you can easily apply this stain and age a DIY quickly and easily. And so that is what I did. And I did it along the sides too, just to kind of hide some of the uneven cuts that I had. Then I did go in with some twine, cause you know me, I love twine. Added some twine, a little bit of color with this floral flower. And just like that, we've got a fun Mother's Day DIY gift using Dollar Tree's knee foam board. Now for the pot. This pot is beautiful, but it's the wrong color. So I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's white chalk paint and give it a good couple coats of that. No, really just one coat because Yes, this is the perfect project to utilize those floral spring napkins that Whitney sent. And I'm gonna decoupage this pot with those spring napkins. That probably wasn't predictable at all, right? Yeah, I took the easy way out on that. I thought about making paper flowers out of the napkins and I probably should have. That would have been a cute addition to maybe the letter K was to make a paper flower instead of using the pink flower now that I'm thinking about it. Grr, can I go back and rewind and do that? That would have been a good idea, but I didn't. And so I went ahead and I cut a couple of the napkins into strips because it makes it a lot easier to apply to a round object if you do strips and covered the whole pot. Then in the bottom of the pot, I added some foam now I've got to address this wood plaque. Now to paint this, I figured I'd do kind of a watercolor look because it's gonna make it easier and quicker to paint. And so you can do that just by adding a bit of water to your acrylic paint and it's not going to be as thick. And when you apply it onto, say this wood plaque, you're gonna get the wood grain that comes through the paint. Now I gotta be honest, as much as I love this wood plaque, it is one of those things that is tedious to paint because of all of the small areas that you gotta get into. And so Whitney, yes, I was taking some deep breaths when I was painting this because I was short on time this day and it ended up taking me a total of three hours to paint this thing, even with the watered down paint but I bit the bullet and I did it and I'm super glad that I did because the outcome came out so stinking cute. Would you take a look at how fun this is? I love just how rustic it looks by using the watercolor paint, 
but I didn't want to lose the lines that were on it. And so I decided to go in with just a brown Sharpie and trace over those lines just to add that detail back into this plaque. I'm super happy with how this turned out. This next step, I figured that this uh, wood stick garden sign that Whitney sent me would be perfect for this because I needed something sturdy to hold this plaque up. So I'm just gonna glue that to the back of this plaque. I might have cheated a little bit on this, but I needed it. And this is going to work for sticking it into the pot, into the foam. Now I'm using hot glue because we all know that when you stick something in foam like this, it kind of loosens up and I want it to be good and sturdy. And so just add glue. Now taking the paper straws and these stickers, I decided to add the stickers to the paper straws. I'm winging it, okay? In my defense, I'm winging it. I'm gonna stick the flower paper straw picks into the foam. Now, honestly, I really didn't think this through before I did it. I just, like I said, was winging it and doing it on a whim. And so the execution of this probably could have been a lot better, but I thought that this was kind of cute nonetheless, but I didn't like the paper straws, the color they were. And so I did decide to go in with some evergreen, um, apple barrel paint and paint the straws after the fact. Like I said, the execution could have been way better, but when you wing it, you kind of don't think of things sometimes until after the fact when it's a little bit too late. But again, it came out great. I needed some space filler for this pot. And so just taking what I have around the house, a trash bag, maybe some paper towels to fill in that extra space before I go in with some of Dollar Tree's reindeer moss. I love the reindeer moss. So whenever you see it, you should pick some up because it is a softer, moister moss. And I kind of prefer it over the dry moss. But nonetheless, let's take a look at how this piece turned out. I'm gonna say it's kind of cute. Now let's go with these mini mason jars. A cute Mother's Day gift is to take some coconut oil. This is a solidified coconut oil that you're gonna wanna use. When it's melted down, it will liquefy, obviously, but then it will re-solidify, which makes it very useful. It is an all-natural product, so once it is melted down, you can go ahead and add either regular sugar or brown sugar to it because I thought it would be fun to make a DIY lip scrub. Fun, right? When you're mixing it, you just want the consistency of the brown sugar to be that of what you see here, just the brown sugar coated in the coconut oil because again, it will re-solidify. Once you've got it to that consistency, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in this mini mason jar. And what a fun gift to give somebody for Mother's Day, just a fun DIY lip scrub in one of these adorable mini mason jars. I love these. For the second jar, I'm gonna melt down more coconut oil and taking one of my favorite scents from Bath and Body Works, I'm gonna add it to the melted down coconut oil to make a whipped body butter. And you can do that either using a coconut oil if you want, or even a baby oiled gel. I prefer to use the coconut oil because again, it will re-solidify and thicken up and a little goes a long way and you're getting an amazing scent. One bottle of lotion is gonna make several of these. If you wanna do bigger jars, you could totally do that. But I thought that it would be just a fun gift to give that maybe you can keep the mini mason jar with the whipped body butter in your purse and just have something that you use for your hands or keep it in your car and it'll be soft, who knows? But it was a good way to use these jars and I think anybody loves mini gifts like this. These are super cute, but they're missing something. And so I did go in with a label from my Cricut and some twine to finish these off. How about a handmade card for Mother's Day using these stickers? Dollar Tree has a ton of stickers. Take some white cardstock, cut it down to card size, whatever card size you want. I utilized my Cricut and the pen feature to write out this card. Fun, right? Then taking the sticker, I'm just gonna place this on the front. I love it. It was the perfect size sticker for a homemade card. 
maybe add a little embellishment to the inside. And just like that, we've got a fun DIY Mother's Day card on a budget. I did go in after the fact, as you can see, and added some stitching to finish off the edges. Well, that was surely a fun challenge. I always love these challenges. You can find a playlist to all of the other creators in the description box below that Courtney has put together. I'm excited to see what items they got, what they do with their boxes. It always makes for a great binge-worthy weekend where you can just pop some popcorn, put your feet up, and watch some of these DIY creators work their magic with these challenging items. I hope you all enjoyed what I did with the mystery box that Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit sent to me. Don't forget to head on over to Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap to see what items I sent to her and what she creates using them. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am.